If this video could smash 30,000 likes in the first week, I'll do whatever the top comment says. Okay, so uh, I mean, you you guys have been killing the support on all of these Mythbuster videos recently, and I mean, I, I, I can't stop them now. You guys just go crazy for these videos. So, uh, you know, today I, I got you guys another episode of the Fortnite Mythbusters. And I mean, in today's episode, we got some of the brand new items being introduced, such as the brand new Poison Dart Trap, which is actually pretty insane. Just like always, if you do have a myth you would like me to test in in the next or future episodes go down in the comments below and leave a comment of any sort of myth anything usually helps an item or just whatever to help spark an idea for a myth also while you guys are down there give me your opinion on epic games removing the 50 plus health or 50 plus shield after every single kill this update has literally given so much heat towards Fortnite, so I'd like to know your guys' opinion. Anyways, can we smash 30,000 likes on today's video? That would be insane, and without further ado, let's begin. Jumping straight into the first myth, the first myth is, what happens if you get boogie bombed while you're inside of a baller? Throughout the past couple of episodes, we've been testing out multiple myths regarding the brand new hamster ball, and I mean, this is the only one that I could think of that we haven't really tested out yet. There were a lot of comments asking to see what happens when you have a boogie bomb thrown at you while you are inside of a baller or a hamster ball and the outcome is pretty surprising. Similar to like a cannon, if a boogie bomb is thrown at you while you're inside of a baller, then it'll automatically kick you out and your player will start dancing just like normal. Sadly, you are unable to get back into the vehicle until the animation is over, till your player is stopped dancing, so... If this ever happens to you mid game, you, you probably just want to run for your life because there's most definitely someone with a shotgun waiting for you right when you pop out. Jumping into the next myth, the next myth is, do the brand new consumable animations, well not really brand new anymore, but anyways, do these animations actually block bullets? So will a chug jug block a bullet, will maybe a shield potion or even a med kit? When I tested this myth out in game, I tested it with just about every single healing item that is in the game currently. I first tested out with the slurp juice and the slurp juice I had just a small second since you do take it really quick but I was able to clip the edge of the sleep juice bottle itself and the bullet went straight through. I then tested it out with a mini shield as well. The mini shield fits literally snug in the hand and it's as if it's not even there. So I, I won't really even count the mini shield. The bullet just kind of goes straight through and hits your player and deals some damage. The make it on the other hand at one angle, it seems as if the hitbox is kind of extended towards the edge of the box, but for in general, but in the case that you do end up shooting the lid of the medkit, it, it won't do any damage the bullet will just go straight through so it's not really a hitbox change that I would really count. Now moving on to the chug jug, this is by far the biggest healing item and the one that most of you guys would probably end up changing hitbox or this could somehow start deflecting bullets but sadly the chug jug does not deflect any bullets, it's basically invisible and the only thing that changes is your player's arms going upwards which is kind of reasonable because your player's hitbox, the arms go up so sadly no change, the chug jug doesn't block any bullets like you hopefully expect. Similar to the mini shield, the big potion actually fits so well in the hands that it's as if it's not even there, you can't really get an angle in between where it won't hit the hitbox. Definitely some of the main questions that I've always wanted to ask myself but never really got the chance to test them out. Now the next myth is actually a really really interesting myth that I like a lot. This myth is, if you find a map, can you find treasure, then drop the map, dig up the treasure, and pick up the map again, or does the map like disappear, could you go find more treasure, what happens with the map? In game when I tested this out, I was in the lobby with some awesome subscribers, massive shout out to them, they helped me find this map. But anyways, when I did get the map, I went to the location of the treasure, and when I got there, you could clearly see the X, but it then disappeared after I do drop the map from my inventory. Luckily though, I was still able to dig it up and once I dug up the treasure, I then had the treasure map still kind of floating there on the side. So I opened up the chest and as you could see, the treasure map does disappear from the ground and is no longer there. I thought this was pretty interesting and I was surprised to see that Epic thought this far into it. I definitely wasn't really expecting for the map to disappear. I thought maybe it would still show the location, just the chest would be there. I, I really didn't know what to expect. I guess it would be pretty cool, but a massive exploit if you could literally have a treasure map and go find six to seven treasures with just one map by using this technique. 
Now this next myth actually involves the brand new trap, the poison dart trap, which is pretty insane. This myth is, what happens when you drive over a poison dart trap while you're inside of a baller? Will it damage you or will it damage your vehicle? What exactly happens? In game when I tested this out, I set up a trap on the ground as well on the wall to get both varieties of what possibly could happen in game. I then spawned in one of the ballers and I went over to the trap to see that nothing really happened. The poison dart trap shot out just like regular as if you were a regular player just running around but to my surprise the poison dart trap didn't do any damage to the baller or even my player. I thought this was pretty interesting and this just proves how much more OP having a baller at the end of a late game if you're in the middle of a scrim. You guys know how hectic and how close together those games get. Having one of these it protects you even furthermore from these type of traps. Jumping into the next myth, the next myth is what happens when a supply drop lands on a geyser? Now before we get into this myth I want to give a massive shout out to I will beat you 56 he came to me on discord and he actually gave me this clip to use to present to you guys in game when this very fortunate event actually did end up happening to him if you actually think about it it's literally like one in 100,000 like Literally, what are the odds of a supply drop landing in this specific location? When the supply drop did land on top of the geyser, sadly nothing happened. It would be pretty insane though if the supply drop were to be launched up into the sky, but sadly it just kind of stuck on top of it and landed as if it wasn't even there. Now this one is actually way different than a supply drop landing in a volcano. When a supply drop does land in the geyser, you are still able to loot it since you can kind of go on the side of it and loot it if you do get it from the right angle. But if a supply drop does land in the volcano, it's kind of a GG, that, that supply drop is basically gone. Anyways, I will beat you 56, thank you so much for sending me in this clip, it honestly means a ton and thanks for sharing it all with us. The next myth is, what happens if you get hit by a snaky snowman grenade after you've been launched out of a cannon? Luckily, I was able to do this myth on the first try, I definitely thought this was going to take me more attempts than it actually did, but I got really lucky on the first try. I had my second account launched from the cannon by itself and I then threw a sneaky snowman grenade and luckily they collided in midair and as you can see it totally stopped the motion of the cannon launch and it just turned my second account into a snowman he dropped to the ground and he did the same effect as if he got a snowman thrown at him while he's in the barrel of the cannon basically he turns into a snowman and then about two or three seconds later it automatically gets removed and he does kind of like this raw looking emote which overall i thought is pretty interesting but anyways this is most likely never going to happen to you in game because literally what are the odds of this. Jumping into the next myth, the next myth is, do the poison dart traps affect AIs? In game when I tested this out, I set it up for all three ranges. I had one up against the spawner itself, then one one tile away, and then another one two tiles away, which if you didn't know already, the max distance one of these traps could actually activate is up to three tiles from it. Surprisingly, in game, if a player or even an AI takes any damage by this trap, it'll end up killing them within seconds, so I guess these traps do affect AIs. If you are making your own custom creative map with AIs as well as these traps, you definitely have to be more mindful as to where you place these down. Jumping into the last and final myth, this myth is, what happens if a clinger is thrown at your baller and the baller breaks before the clinger explodes? Now I thought this was pretty interesting and this is definitely one of the more realistic myths that is probably going to happen to you in game at least once. I tested this myth out by getting my baller all the way down to just about 20 HP, that way it could be one tap by my golden scar that I have. Then I had my second count as well as my own player throw a clinger at it and right before it explodes we shoot the baller one more time to destroy it. Surprisingly once the baller is destroyed and the clinger has yet to explode, the clinger will then fall down onto the ground and then explode as if it was just in a regular game. So if this ever does happen to you in a regular game, you definitely have to watch out because it will deal a whole ton of damage to your player and most likely kill you in one hit because I mean literally clingers are overpowered nowadays. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode of the Fortnite Mythbusters. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you are new to the channel. If you made it this far, make sure to comment down Rocket and I'll recognize all of you. Like I said before, if we can smash 30,000 likes on today's episode, that would be insane. Also, make sure to ring that bell to be notified whenever I upload or do go live and I will see you guys next time.